Today's full story is an attempt Marvel made recently to reinvent Spider-Man. They did a 12-issue run where they just retold a lot of Spider-Man's origins, calling it the Spidey series. It was a lot of fun, but it doesn't appear to have stuck. It's just something they did that didn't really last very long, but we do get a revamped Spider-Man origin. So here is the Spidey series right here at the Full Story channel, where we take a lot of the videos that we made over in Comic Story and which are audio dramas of comic books, and we combine them into these giant videos three times a week. There you go. This is Peter Parker, spider bite, totally radioactive. But it did come with some cool powers. And what do you do with cool powers? You make some money, help some family, and do the normal things. But the moment that Peter's Uncle Ben was shot, all of that changed. And he decided, why not use your powers for good? Like stopping a bank robbery that happens to be conducted by a hot girl in a bunny outfit and then post on a social media. But all of this doing good is making Peter late for classes, so much so that he needs a tutor. The arrangement is that he'll tutor her for one class and she'll tutor him for another one. So Peter walks the halls thinking about Gwen Stacy, his crush, as his tutor. When Flash Thompson pushes him down, Peter thinks to himself that he can take him. In fact, maybe it's time for him to get his revenge. But before Peter can react, Gwen Stacy punches Flash. She tells Peter that he can't have his brains knocked around before she can take advantage of them first. And that they need to go now or they're going to be late for their field trip to Oscorp the place where great minds come together to think under one roof. Everything is going fine on the field trip until Peter's spidey sense goes crazy, and then Dr. Otto Octavius comes crashing in. Peter sneaks off to change into his superhero costume while Otto Octavius tries to steal Oscorp's technology. As Peter begins to crawl through the vents, Octavius rips Peter out of them. Spider-Man? The one that the Daily Bugle calls a menace? Uh, that was a typo. They misspelled hero. Peter begins to fight with Octavius's arms until he shocks Octavius with a power line. Octavius then begins to knock down a giant pillar, using it to escape, because Peter has to grab the pillar before it can crush everyone. Once everyone is clear, Peter swings out of the building, grabbing Gwen Stacy along for the ride. After she's safe, Peter asks if she's okay, and she tells him, yeah. You? Peter thinks to himself, say something cool, you've got this man, you've got this, and he responds with, yeah, while thinking to himself, nailed it. After everything is clear, Peter's friend Harry introduces him to his father, Norman Osborn. And Peter tells Norman how his work is an inspiration. And Norman tells him to keep his grades up and he'll have a spot here for Peter. Later, when Peter gets home late, he explains to Aunt May that it was because of the field trip. And she asks if he learned anything from it. And he tells her, yeah, never give up. Meanwhile, back at Oscorp, a worker tells Norman Osborn that because of Spider-Man, Dr. Otto Octavius couldn't steal there, and that's when Norman stops him. He's much more interested in how Spider-Man even got in there in the first place. As Norman looks at his computer thinking about this Spider-Man, we see an image of someone, Green Goblin, looking back at Norman, and the Green Goblin reflection tells him, not to worry, they're almost ready. On the next day, Peter starts his day with Aunt May asking if today is the big day, seeing as he's changed his shirt five times before leaving for school. Peter tells her that it is the day, the first day where he's going to tutor Gwen Stacy. And those shirts were just dirty and stupid. Aunt May tells him to relax, just be himself. So during class, Peter begins to think about that. Which self should he be? His nerdy self? His broke self? Maybe his spidey self? And as the bell rings, Gwen pulls Peter into the library to help her study. Peter thinks to himself that he just needs to be himself, and he begins to look over her work, and she asks if he thinks that she can really pass, and he thinks to himself, say something cool, say something cool, and then in a Gandalf tone, he says, you shall pass. Gwen tells Peter that Gandalf rocks, but it's time for her to help him with his studies. As Peter begins to swing around the city, he thinks about how Gwen likes Gandalf, and how he likes Gandalf, and how they both like Gandalf. But before long, his spidey sense begins to go off, and he sees a bank being robbed. As he looks around, he doesn't see anything other than sand, but the sand is moving. The sand begins to rise up, taking the form of a person, and it punches Peter. This is Sandman, AKA Flint Marco, AKA a real jerk. He's the bank robber, considering he just punched Peter out of the bank. As Peter gets outside, he realizes that he needs to get Sandman away from the people before they get hurt. So Peter grabs the money and Sandman begins to chase him as Peter is looking for a place where Sandman can't hurt people. And just as Peter sees it, Sandman blasts him in the back with sand. Peter looks around and notices that he fell into a construction site. Perfect, more sand. The sand begins to swirl around Peter and he realizes that Sandman may be trying to bury him. But don't worry though, this is all a part of Peter's plan. Probably, maybe. But you know what hurts Sandman more than Spidey? 
water. So he shoots his web, opening up a water valve, spraying Sandman, and then breaking free of the sand tornado thing. Peter then turns on a cement machine and asks Sandman his thoughts on cement. And just as Sandman gets covered up in cement, he tries to yell out to Peter. And Peter tells him, yeah, I love it too. Peter tells the police that they're welcome, and he's glad that he could have helped. And the police ask him if he's kidding. What are they supposed to do with him now? He's a giant block of cement. Peter says that at least he's not going anywhere. And the cops tell him, that's the problem. Uh, right, um, bye. And Peter webs away. Later that night, Peter gets home and Aunt May asks how his day went. And Peter tells her that it was great, actually. Aunt May asks how he managed to do that and Peter tells her he was himself. Every single one of them. Peter Parker has been having a rough time juggling his life, superhero life, and school. His grades are slipping, he isn't popular anywhere, and he just wants to beat up these bullies since he is Spider-Man, but he knows if the world finds out that he is Spider-Man, it'll ruin May's life. To make matters worse, his aunt is having problems covering their bills, making Peter think that he might need to go get a job. And so he becomes the amazing pizza delivery boy! Except on his first day of work, he rides into the middle of New York where there are countless lizards running around. And here he thought that his spidey sense was going off because he was going to be late delivering this pizza. Thinking to himself, oh well, he slips into an alley and he changes into his Spider-Man outfit before swinging back onto the streets to web up all of the lizards. But Spidey finds it a bit odd that this is obviously a plot from the lizard, but the lizard isn't around. The lizard is an army medic that lost his arm and then he tried to conduct research with lizard DNA to allow him to regrow said arm. But it had a side effect of changing him into a giant lizard man bent on changing the entire world into lizards. He looks over and he notices that some of those lizards are jumping into the sewers and he realizes that that is probably where the lab is at. So he climbs down and he turns on his spidey symbol flashlight and he follows the trail until he gets into the lizard's lab. While there is no lizard there, he does find a bunch of eggs and that's when they begin to hatch into little lizards. And it's almost as if it's perfect timing because this is a comic book or something. As they begin to hatch all around Spidey, he's not really that concerned, but they then begin to quickly overwhelm him and he does get a little concerned. As he whips his way to the ceiling to get away from the lizards, the lizard himself returns, grabbing Spidey by the throat and throwing him aside, asking, why would you hatch the egg so soon? Spidey slumps to the ground and he begins to wonder if splints can break because he knows he heard something break. He then runs back to the surface, getting the lizard to follow him and once he's topside to get a little breathing room, he begins to whip around, gaining momentum so that he can punch the lizard. But that's when the lizard gets his tail around Spidey's neck, throwing him into the nearby wall. Spidey jumps back, launching himself into the air, knocking out the lizard with a big hit. But that's when he sees a larger problem. These lizard monsters are escaping into the city. But that also gives him an idea. Sell them to the zoo. The zookeeper explains to him that they don't exactly pay money for the these kinds of things, but if he wants, he could probably sell photos to the National Geographic. And that's when it dawns on him. Why not take more pictures of Spider-Man and sell those? He hugs the zookeeper while wearing his souvenir hat and pennant, and then he goes to take pictures of Spider-Man, selling them to make money for Aunt May. Crisis solved! Now it's time for issue four. Spidey was walking through the park thinking about how things just aren't working out still. Villains are escaping all over the place and the photo that he sent in was used to paint him as a menace and the bullies at school still won't leave him alone. But his soul searching walk brings him to a museum where he witnesses a guy in a green hoodie stealing a painting and trying to sneak away. He walks up to him telling the thief to stomp and that's when the thief pulls out a gun revealing it to be Dr. Doom. No seriously, it's Dr. Doom in a green hoodie. He tells Spidey that he's returning this artwork to Latveria and he isn't gonna play some game with some 15 year old kid. And Spidey his reply is, uh, you're 15. And then he thinks to himself, smooth, Pete, smooth. He then asks, is Dr. Doom going hippie? Does he prefer to be called the Doomster now? And the Doomster shouts back at him, my name is Dr. Doom. The two of them begin to battle it out, bouncing off the walls of the museum with Dr. Doom's rocket boots until Spidey gets a chance to whip the gun and punch off Dr. Doom's head, which informs Spidey that this isn't really Dr. Doom, but is actually a Doombot. He swings into the city where he sees on TV that the Doombots are fighting all over the place, fighting various superheroes. And that's what gets Spidey thinking. What is Dr. Doom really after? But as he continues to watch the television, Television, he sees a tagline that there are power outages in Brooklyn and he thinks to himself, is Dr. Doom trying to steal power? He gets over to the power station where inside he does find Dr. Doom. And Dr. Doom turns around and tells Spidey that we are actually the same. Superior intellect, incredible power, and we are both incredibly alone. Then he stops and Spidey looks at him. Did we just have a moment? No, 
I was simply waiting. Waiting for, ah, uh, never mind. Spidey says as he sees Doombots are now surrounding him. He begins beating on the Doombots, taking off their heads until one of them gets his hands on Spidey, blasting him through the ceiling and into the city. He goes flying through the roof of an apartment building and then hits a wall, floor, wall, floor, wall, and he lands in the park outside. That's where a little kid walks over in a Spidey mask and asks him what happened. He tells him that he got beat by Dr. Doom and the kid tells him, you got this, you're Spider-Man. He then gives Spidey a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and they swap masks because Spidey's was ripped and Owen had an awesome one that he made himself. Spidey then swings back over to the power station where he positions himself outside, whips up a spiderweb launcher together, and he throws himself into the power station and into Doom's machine powering the Doom bots. As he lands destroying it, he shuts down all of the bots. He looks around and he doesn't see Doom. And the news gives credit to Captain America for stopping Doctor Doom, leaving the newspapers to blame Spidey for trashing the museum. In the end, Doom went back to Latveria. He did win though, because he actually just wanted that painting. He felt that a painting made by a Latverian painter deserved to be in the Latveria Museum. One of the Doombots then asks him if he meant what he said. Is he alone? And Doom scoffs at that. Doom is never alone. Well, it was a good run for Peter Parker. But how did it get to the end? It all started one day after school when Peter was watching Gwen walk home with Flash Thompson. Harry tells Peter not to worry. There are plenty of fish in the sea, but Peter feels that he may not even be in the sea. As the two of them begin to head home, Harry's father, Norman Osborne, comes by to check on Peter to see if he'd like to accept his offer of helping tutor Harry. Seeing that Peter helped Gwen with math, Norman wanted to pay Peter to help Harry with his studies. After a little convincing, Peter agrees, and Norman hands him a check for a rather large sum of money. Before Peter can tell him it's too much, Norman just tells him it's nonsense. Peter knows his self-worth. Later, as Peter watches over New York, his spidey sense goes off as a crime goes off nearby. And when he gets there, the robbers don't seem to be going anywhere. Peter jumps down and he knocks the robbers out, and he tells them, normally after you rob a bank, you like, run away, guys. The robbers tell him that they actually were paid to wait, and then Peter asks for who? And he hears a voice tell him, me, the Green Goblin. The Goblin flies into Peter, slamming him against a building. Peter tells him, no time, no see, and then he begins to jump away, but as he's trying to jump away, the Green Goblin grabs him by the ankle and electrocutes him. Peter manages to swing away, but the Goblin throws his bombs at Peter, who has to duck behind a billboard. After setting up his camera and swinging back into action, Peter starts to beat on the Goblin, but before long, the Goblin begins to escape. As Peter chases after him, Green Goblin starts to throw his bomb at all of the nearby civilians, so Peter is distracted having to save them. And then the goblin starts to laugh. <laughs> he knocks Peter away and Peter realizes that he is in fact out of webbing and he's now got no other options. He crashes through a manhole cover and the goblin tells him, you can't escape. Who needs to escape, Peter tells him. As the goblin gets close to the sewer, Peter jumps back out covered in water, shocking the goblin and knocking him off of his hoverboard. The goblin then begins to pick himself back up and he begins to hold his left arm and tells Peter, there is something else you are, a worthy opponent. The green goblin jumps back on his hoverboard and he begins to fly up telling Peter Parker, soon, spider, soon. But Peter suffered his own injuries, such as hurting his leg and he yells, ah yeah, you better run. Then a random passerby turns to him and tells him, get a job, and he continues to walk off. The next day at school, Peter and Harry begin to leave class and Nora meets up with them to pick up Harry. But there's something the two notice about each other. Peter is limping on his leg and Norman has a broken arm. They begin to stare at each other and wonder if, maybe, are they Spider-Man and the Green Goblin? No, no, it can't be that easy. The Green Goblin would never believe that Spider-Man is a boy. And Peter can't believe a genius like Norman Osborn would be a madman like the Green Goblin. For now, it doesn't matter. It's time for Peter to get back to work as Spider-Man. Now we go to issue six. For Peter, life has not always been awesome, but he is getting help, at least in school. Ever since his teacher, Mr. Maxwell's paired him up with Gwen Stacy, the two have been helping each other in their work where Peter helps with math and Gwen's been helping him with his history. After their history test, Gwen tells Peter not to worry. He did fine. He does have like the greatest history tutor ever, but as the two of them leave school to get some ice cream, Gwen says that it looks like they're getting closer to winter break. And Peter responds by stating that in the uh, winter formal. He begins to trail off as his spider sense starts going off though. He starts to walk off away from Gwen Stacy and she asks what he was gonna say about the, but Peter just says nothing and he tells her he'll catch her tomorrow. He ducks into an alley to change into Spider-Man and he thinks to himself, he really needs to work on asking Gwen out. As he swings towards the building where his sense was going off, he starts stating to himself out loud, do you want to go to the winter formal? And as he enters into a hole into the building, he's still repeating the same question and that's when a voice tells him, ah, I'll pass. The voice belongs to the vulture and he's stealing from, Tony Stark. Peter asks the Vulture how he's been, and the Vulture tells him, get out of my way. He knocks Peter away with the briefcase that he's taken, and then he slashes at Peter's back. 
With Peter down, the vulture makes his escape back out of the hole that he's made, but before Peter can chase after him, he hears a voice telling him, Alt! Peter turns around and he sees Iron Man and he asks, Was Alt too formal? Maybe don't move? Yeah, that's way better. He then scans Peter, but when he looks at his face, his scanner isn't picking up anything. Iron Man tells Peter, he'll make him a deal. Before I hand you over to S.H.I.E.L.D., you can take that mask off and we can talk like grown-ups. But Peter isn't a grown-up, and he shoots out the window telling him that the Vulture is getting away! Iron Man follows Spider-Man and flies after him, shooting missiles, and Peter tells him, Look, I'm not the thief! I wouldn't break into Stark Industries! Besides, your boss, Tony Stark? Dude's a genius, and I'm a huge fan! Peter continues on, the guy we're actually after is the Vulture, and if you'd like, you can ask him since he's right over there, Iron Man! Iron Man tells him, Alright, maybe you were right, so how about we team up instead? Team up? With you? Awesome! As Peter and Iron Man attempt to capture the Vulture, the Vulture flies through nearby Gondor, the lines and he snaps them. Iron Man flies underneath to try and catch the gondola and he tells Peter to keep on moving. Peter swings over kicking the vulture and taking back the briefcase but as the vulture goes in for another attack his wings get blasted by Iron Man who tells him that they're done here and you're welcome for not making any barbecued wing jokes. As Peter and Iron Man sit on a roof Iron Man asks if he has any idea what he was doing and Peter says what no yes what am I on a venture now no but not even close I did stop talking. Iron Man begins to head out but Peter stops him asking if he ain't out with Tony Stark, and Iron Man tells him, all the time. Then Peter says that he's pretty good at dating and stuff, right? Do you have any tips for me? As he blasts off, he says, fortune favors the bold. Ask her out before she has plans. And then Iron Man leaves. The next day after class, Peter walks with Gwen, and he finally asks her if she would like to go to the Winter Formal. And she tells him, yes, she would, but she's already told Flash she'll go with him. Peter says, oh, he just maybe thought they could study that night if she wasn't going, but he'll just see her tomorrow. Later, Peter sits alone on a building until it becomes night, and he hears a voice asking, Has the girl already had a date? Peter puts his mask back on in a hurry, and he says, No, yes. Iron Man tells him, I've been there, all the time. Some of the time. Okay, once. But, I know it will make you feel better. I just got an alert that Fang Fang something is trying to eat Brooklyn. You wanna go punch a dragon? Peter Parker has been having a weird week, and it wasn't from the recent bad guys that he's been fighting. And even the normal part of his life of being picked on at school by Flash Thompson really wasn't weird. What was weird was the Friday that Peter and Gwen Stacy were studying, and she asked him a question. The question was to see if Peter would help tutor Flash Thompson. Now, the possible answers to that would be A, no thank you, B, are you trying to play Peacemaker or get me killed, and are you and Flash an actual thing, or C, I'd rather chew my hand off, or D, are you crazy? Peter responds with, can I think about it? Gwen tells him that he's the best tutor, and Peter thinks that he's actually the worst tutor. But later that night, Peter waits for a crime, and he thinks about how he can't really help Flash. Flash is one of his nemeses. Nemesi? Wh whatever, whatever. And to top it all off, Peter's getting a little bored because he can't seem to find someone to punch tonight until his spider sense seemingly goes off. And that's when he realizes maybe there's still hope to punch something. He swings out over to a warehouse where he finds it empty, and he begins to question where did everyone go? Maybe down that awesome trap door? He climbs down the trap door that he found, and he sees a tunnel with men moving all kinds of something. And he figures that they won't punch themselves, so... But that's what he's told to stop by somebody behind him, and he begins to wonder why his spidey sense didn't go off. Peter looks behind him, and he sees the Black Panther, the king and protector of Wakanda, which explains why his spidey sense didn't go off. Black Panther's really not a bad guy. Black Panther tells Peter that he should seize his actions. Those men down there, they will answer to me. They've stolen Wakanda's prize, but Peter cuts him off asking, Is it vibranium? That rare Wakandan metal that has all kinds of crazy properties like absorbing sound? Black Panther tells him, Your knowledge is impressive, but my spies have already been keeping track of these thieves. So, you should go. But before he can finish stating that, Peter already jumped down to begin fighting. Americans, T'Challa says. Black Panther jumps down following Peter and the two of them begin to knock out all of the thieves and Peter begins to ask, how did Black Panther get his awesome abilities? Did he get bitten by a radioactive panther? Black Panther tells him, that's absurd. And Peter agrees, getting powers from a radioactive animal bite? That's, that's so absurd. So the two of them finish cleaning up the rest of the thieves and Black Panther looks over at the supplies and he notices that most of it's there, but some of that metal is missing. And that's when Peter's spidey sense goes off again. The two of them turn around to see the claw. Black Panther tells him to stand down unless he's prepared to be beaten again, and the Claw tells him, I'm prepared, and he blasts Peter and Black Panther with a sound blast. Peter flies off into the crate of Vibranium while Claw continues to attack the Black Panther, and that's when Peter gets an idea. Maybe he can use some of the Vibranium. 
He jumps back in to fight with two pieces of vibranium webbed to his ears, and he knocks out Claw and he webs him to the ground. Peter begins to talk to Black Panther, and that's when Black Panther points at Peter's ears. Peter realizes, my bad, was I yelling? Black Panther tells him, no, you were screaming, actually. And you shouldn't curse so much for being such a young man. Once they round up Claw and the rest of the thieves, Black Panther tells Peter the secret to his abilities is that he listens. When you listen, you open your mind to a world where the mundane becomes. And Peter begins to swing off telling him, listening, got it, see you the next team up. Americans, T'Challa says again. But as the week begins, it goes back to being a weird week when Friday finally comes down and Flash is told that Peter will help him study. Gwen tells him it's a package deal. She'll help with history, and he'll help with math, or they both won't help. Flash tells Peter he's not sure why Gwen is friends with him, and Peter tells him, I'm not sure either, but Peter thinks to himself that he's listening, and you know what he hears? The sound of someone not being beat up. So with that, it's time for them to study. And that is issue seven. Now let's move on to issue eight. Peter and Gwen decide to go onto the movies one night, and despite what people may think, it is not a date, or is it? As they sit in the theater to watch Raiders of the Lost Ark, Peter mentioned that this is his seventh time seeing it, and Gwen tells him, first two, twice with Flash. So Peter asks, how are things with Flash? And she tells him that they're fine, they're just friends, which surprises Peter. That's when the lights go out. But not the kind of going out for the dark of the movie so it can start, but the blackout kind. And Peter's spidey sense goes off. He runs outside and he changes into a suit and he looks over the city. And yeah, it's the total blackout kind of lights going out thing. Peter begins to swing past the buildings trying to see what's going on. And that's when he sees a light behind him and he hears a voice saying, it's tough to find a spider. He looks back to see Electro and with the blackout, he thinks that he really should have been able to put that together. Together. Peter shoots his webs and he asks if he really wants to tangle again. From their last battle, Peter had to make some changes because when he grabbed Electro last time, he shocked Peter through the web. But as Peter begins to swing Electro around, Electro tells him that he made some adjustments himself. And he electrocutes Peter, launching him into an AC unit. Electro begins firing off electrical blasts and Peter manages to dodge them. But one of them hits a billboard behind Peter. Down on the streets below, Gwen looks for Peter but notices the sign falling towards an older woman. She quickly runs over, pushing the woman out of the way, asking if she's okay. And the woman tells her that she was fine until she tackled her. Peter swings down telling Gwen that it's nice to see her again and that he appreciates the help. Keep in mind, he's Spider-Man right now and she doesn't know that Peter is Spider-Man. And that's when Spider-Man tells her that there's a homicidal slash electrical maniac on the loose, so... But Gwen tells him that she's looking for her friend Peter. He went missing in the blackout. Spider-Man points over to the police on scene telling her not to worry. Her friend is over there helping the police. And then he swings off stating that that Peter guy's an awesome guy. Firm handshake, great hair. Anyway, bye. Peter swings back up to fight with Electro and he gets shot right back into the ground. He needs to get Electro away from these people and then he looks over and he sees some people walking out of the subway and that's when he has a plan. He runs down into the subway and he begins swinging through the tunnels having Electro chase and shoot at him. Every so often, Peter stops to have a quick battle but ultimately, he runs into a dead end. He then looks at Electro telling him not to say it, but he says it anyway. Dead end, spider! Dude! Electro then begins to close in on Peter, telling him that he's trapped. And Peter tells him, you're right, but you're also trapped. You used up all of your electrical power chasing me through the subway and there's no electricity down here, which means a lights out. Once getting Electro to the police, the police tell Peter that the bugle is right. He is a menace. And so Peter changes back into civilian clothes to go back to his not date with Gwen Stacy. After he gets back down to the ground, he hears Gwen call out to him, telling him that she's been looking for him and stating that she got to meet Spider-Man. Peter tells her, I did too, great guy, firm handshake. He then goes on to state that it seems like there won't be any electricity for a while, so maybe they should take a rain check on that movie. Gwen walks off telling him, it's a date, and heads home. Elsewhere though, the police car taking Electro suddenly feels a boom underneath it, and the car flips over into a street post. Electro starts to wiggle his way out of the wreck and he asks, what is you? Why would you help me? The voice tells him that he has plans to destroy Spider-Man, and to be frank, it's rather. The dust then begins to settle, and there stands Doc Ock finishing his sentence. Sinister. For Peter Parker, he has the awesome job of being Spider-Man, except for the part where it doesn't really pay, which is why he has to sell his pictures to the Bugle for some money, which there is very little of. However, one day while getting some film developed in a lab, Peter finds an old roll lying around. The lab worker looks at it, telling him that even the company who has made this roll is out of business. He'll develop it anyway though, maybe they'll have something else that they can sell to Jonah Jameson. Peter begins to leave for the day, wondering what he could possibly get Aunt May for her birthday. But after leaving, a mysterious man appears before Jonah, asking who took this picture of Spider-Man. Jonah asks, who are you supposed to be? The man tells him, Sergei Kravinov. 
but others call him, that's when Jonas stomps him, telling him, Craven the Hunter, I've heard. So what are you hunting? Craven smiles, and he says he's going to be hunting spiders. Back outside, as Peter still looks for a gift for Aunt May, his spider sense begins to go off, and he's pretty sure that someone's following him. He ducks into an alleyway, and shortly after that, Craven turns down the same alley. After quickly changing into Spider-Man, Peter jumps on Craven's head, asking, Hey buddy, you like to hide in this alley too? Craven shouts at him, telling him, I don't hide. And he begins to swing around wildly. I caught the scent of the photographer, Peter Parker. Are you a friend of him? Or perhaps? Peter interrupts him, stating, Puny Parker, that guy never gets my good side. He manages to kick Craven back, and then he webs the dumpster behind him, flipping it over onto Craven. But Craven just lunges forward, headbutting Peter. As Craven continues to swing, Peter notices that it seems that he's gotten a lot faster than the last time that they met. But as the fight continues, Craven starts to use different gadgets trying to capture Peter. He throws small explosives, an electric whip, a glue gun, and even just knives. Peter dodges everything, but there is one thing that hits him, and that's his fist. Craven kicks Peter away, but before he can grab at him, Peter turns over, shining a light into Craven's eyes. He jumps back up, punching Craven, and he webs him to the wall, thinking about how that was just too easy. He's not that good, or maybe he is. Maybe he's just lucky. But when he turns around to look back, Craven's gone. And Peter says, yeah, I was just lucky. A little while later, Peter heads back to the lab to pick up his photos, and when he sees what they are, he says that this would make a perfect gift for Aunt May. Elsewhere, Craven paces in a lab, stating he does not like to lose. All of his friends' little tricks didn't work. Nothing kills better than a pair of hands. The man then turns, showing that he's talking to Doc Ock. Looks like you're in luck then, huh? Once Peter gets back home, Peter wishes Aunt May a happy birthday, and as she goes to unwrap her gift, she tells him that he didn't have to get her anything. As she continues to unwrap it, Peter asks if she remembers the first night that he stayed with her and Uncle Ben. And she says it was the night that they all camped out and slept in the living room and used Ben's camera for... But she stops and looks at the photo of the three of them in Peter's pillow fort. And she tells him, this is a perfect present. Moving on to the next story. Being a hero is glamorous, right? People love you, except when they don't because the newspaper tells everyone that you're not really a hero. Even after stomping a mugger in the street, the victim takes his stuff back from Peter stating that he'll call the cops on him, on Spider-Man. Maybe Spider-Man should have a PR person, or maybe just shout from the rooftop that his name is Spider-Man and he's here to help. But a voice asks, is that so? Because that's what it says on the back of the shield. And Captain America grabs Peter by the shoulder. Cap tells him, I've heard of you. Well, this is my neighborhood and I was just down on a patrol. You want to join me? And Peter Parker tells him, um, sure. I mean, yes, please. So Captain America and Spider-Man go out helping the citizens of New York. And Peter begins to wonder, why does everyone love this guy? But as they finish, they look out on the city and Cap asks him, why do you do it? Respectfully, you're a kid. Shouldn't you be doing kid things? Peter tries to come up with a witty remark, but he ends up just telling him, someone once told me that with great power comes great responsibility. Now I can help. So I do, or at least try to anyways. Good answer. But as Peter begins to ask if he can ask a question, his spider sense begins to go off and he jumps up holding Cap's shield. Behind them, AIM agents start coming at them, firing guns at the two of them. Doesn't take long for the two of them to knock out the AIM agents, but Cap begins to ask, what's with the attack? And the agent says that they're just the opening act. Peter begins to say that he thinks the main attraction just arrived. Any chance that one of your villains is a giant floating head with itty bitty arms? Cap says, I should have known. When there's AIM, there's MODOK. MODOK begins to fire a mental blast, sending the two of them down into the warehouse below. And Peter catches them with a web before hitting the floor. He says that the giant head is pretty mean. And Cap says, mean and brilliant. But he's nothing with a little game of catch. Cap and Peter begin to jump into combat, kicking and taking out the agents. And once they're done, Cap charges with his shield straight at MODOK. And when he looks back, he sees that all of the agents are already tied up. And he tells Spider-Man, not bad. Once S.H.I.E.L.D. comes by to pick up MODOK and the rest of AIM, Cap begins to ask, what was it you were going to ask me? And Peter tells him, I was going to ask, why do people love you so much? But after today, I can see why. Reputation comes and goes. Sometimes you're a good guy, sometimes you're a bad guy. But all that matters is what you do next. Peter heads out thinking, he's right. He is Captain America. He's always right. And once he leaves, Agent Coulson asks, how did he do? Cap tells him Iron Man's assessment was spot on. The next day, while Cap goes out for his run, he runs by a newsstand and he notices the paper. The headline asks, is Spider-Man really an agent of AIM? And it shows a picture of Peter with one of the AIM agents. A little while later, Cap goes to the bugle and he tells Jonah that he would like to talk to him about Spider-Man. He was with them yesterday and they took MODOK down together. Spider-Man's not a menace. I know what a menace looks like. So later, Peter begins to read the newly printed newspaper with the headline, Captain America and Spider-Man saved the city from MODOK. Peter looks over at Jonah and he gives him the okay and Jonah just shuts his blinds with his newly shaved face. Peter Parker's day began like any other. Go to school, take a test, help the fine people of the city as Spider-Man, even though they still think he's weird. 
Sure, he may have missed out on a chance to hang out with Gwen and Flash after class, but it's fine. He has other things to do, which sadly has nothing to do with Gwen. And then he has to think about how he's just wasting his life. That is, until he sees the coolest thing ever. A giant purple guy and a bunch of superheroes fighting against him. Who cares who that is? It's time for the ultimate team up. Just act natural, talk less, smile more, even though the people can't see your smile underneath your mask. But just as Peter's about to leap into battle to join everyone, he finds himself grabbed by the leg and slammed onto the rooftop. Scorpion then tells him, tonight you die. And Peter tells him, uh, no thank you. Peter then says that he isn't sure if he noticed, but there's a giant monster kind of destroying everything. So maybe Scorpion could try to murder him on another night? After throwing Scorpion into the wall, Peter then wraps him up and pulls out his phone to call S.H.I.E.L.D., except he kind of forgot their number. It's not 911, you know, there is no quick S.H.I.E.L.D. number. Before long, Scorpion breaks free from the webbing and he goes back to attacking. But things are seeming a bit different about him. He keeps shouting, tonight he dies, which isn't normal for Mr. Scorporino. Peter manages to knock Scorpion back down again and he webs him up, again. And Scorpion rips out, again. Scorpion then fires a blast from his tail, knocking Peter over the edge. But before falling, Scorpion catches him and slams him back into the building. Soon the two of them fall down to the street and Peter tells him, you know what, tails are out this year, and he rips Scorpion's tail off. Scorpion shouts no, but Peter tells him yes, and he webs him up for the third time. Scorpion then tells him, please, please get these voices out of my head. Peter looks and sees a small metal pin on the back of his neck, so he pulls him out. However, before Peter can look at it, the pin self-destructs, which there's nothing very evil about, not at all, not even a little bit. Now, with Scorpion finally taken care of, it's time to get to that giant crossover battle. Elsewhere, though, Doc Ock is watching, along with a few other villains, planning their next move. Back in the streets, Peter jumps into action, telling everyone, all right, that Calvary is, oh, come on. The rest of the superheroes begin to leave after their victory, and Ben Grimm says that if he really wants to help, he can help clean up the mess. The next day, Peter heads back to school just like any other day, assuming that things will probably be close to the same. That is until Gwen asks Peter if he would like to go to the school dance with her. And that concludes Spidey issue 11. Now it's time for Spidey issue 12 with the Sinister Six. Shockingly enough for Peter, he was having an amazing day. Aunt May finally got a job working at a shelter, and he's going to a dance with Gwen. Even J. Jonah Jameson liked two, count them, two of his pictures of Spider-Man, even though they were still mostly garbage. After getting ready, Peter and Gwen head back to the dance, and there's one thing that Peter wants to ask. Why him? She's amazing, smart, funny, badass, and he's, well, Peter Parker. She tells him that she's really not hearing the question, and when is he gonna realize just how great he really is? After the dance, the two of them head to the all-night diner to get something to eat, and Peter begins to think that nothing can ruin this amazing day, until his spidey sense goes off. Peter tells Gwen that it looks like it's getting late, plus her dad's a cop, so maybe she should head, but she tells him that she knows they should call it a night. She then thanks Peter for the perfect kiss, and before Peter can question that, she kisses him. So yeah, perfect day ruined by stupid spidey sense. Peter suits up and he begins to follow the cries for help until he finds a man tied to a chair. He reaches out for him, but his hand passes through the man, and that's when he notices that it's a hologram, which is very cool, but that also means Mysterio. Mysterio fires a blast at Peter and then begins to circle around him, telling him that they have all missed him. Electro then appears shocking Peter and tells him that actually, he didn't miss him at all. And just as Peter webs his hands together, Vulture swoops in, grabbing him by the shoulders. Vulture then flies up, kicking Peter through a building and out the other side of it. As he's falling, Peter begins to think that hopefully there's something soft below him, because right now, he's feeling a bit semi-conscious right about, and as he lands, he's thankful that there is sand to stomp him. Then he realizes, sand in the middle of New York, stopping his fall. Wait a second. Sandman begins to rise, and he punches Peter back down, smashing him into the ground. But instead of continuing his attack, Sandman begins to fade back into his sand, and next, Craven stands up from the sand. Craven hits Peter with a barrage of punches, and with one final kick, he knocks him away. And a voice then tells Peter that this is what he's wanted for so long. Him at his feet! And the Sinister Six all stand over him. And Peter begins to wonder if this is it. Is this the end of his life? And then he notices that his life isn't flashing before his eyes. All he sees is today, the good and amazing perfect day that he had. The dance with Gwen, Jonah actually helping him out. Aunt May, no, he can't give up just yet. And just as Doc Ock goes in for a strike, Peter manages 
to jump away, and then he swings back in, kicking everyone. Next, he webs a hold of Vulture, and he slings him back into Sandman, and then he finally grabs Doc Ock's arms and swings them back, hitting him in the face. After tying everyone up with the mechanical arms, Peter tells them that this isn't the end for him, though it might be the end for his costume. The next morning, Peter begins to think about how he got to where he is now. Bitten by a radioactive spider, given great powers, sometimes he doesn't win. In fact, more often than not, he loses. But he'll never give up. Why, you ask? Because he's the amazing Spider-Man. And there you have it, today's full story. I hope you guys enjoyed. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell right here on this channel, as it will only ever be receiving full stories from the other channel. And if you want to see the videos as they come out, make sure you go check out the Comic Story and Main channel, where you get five days of videos a week. I'll see you next time.